Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, you know, like, uh, if you remember uh, when Muslims always we speak to them about anything regardless uh, uh, their religion, uh, the Muslims always blame someone else of everything. As an example, the terrorism, you know, America, Israel. But when the terrorist Muhammad was exist, there was no America, there was no Israel, and actually he is the one who sent letters to the king of the Roman, convert or die. When we say to them, uh, uh, violence, Islam teach violence, then the Muslim will respond, will say, shall I show you verses from the Old Testament 4,000 years ago? Uh, I mean, always they have to blame somebody for what they do. Let us say for the sake of argument, there's other religion believe in violence. That will not make you clear from your violence. I mean, you just said, okay, me and them. That's stupid of you. So they think always by throwing something on someone else, when you show me a verse from the Old Testament 4,000 years ago or 3,000 years ago and I show you you today you know we are talking about time where everybody lived by the sword die by the sword and in a time supposedly we became way more civil today not 4,000 years ago so look what Islam did you know the Middle East was way better than before Islam before Islam the Middle East was uh, in different level all Muslims agree that Muhammad himself used to work for his wife and this is before she became his wife what happened to women after Islam you see they say to you that Arab they used to abuse women which is a lie because women in the Middle East at that time they were masters and Muhammad is was was a servant himself for a woman there was a queens and leaders. So what happened? <clears throat> you know what I mean? What happened exactly? Why we cannot See the same women exist again why after Islam women they are wearing burqa before Islam they were not was the Arab at that time different from the Arab today was the Arab jumping over each other and like when they see a woman in the street they jump on her you see all the stories we hear from Muhammad and his uh, companions about the Arab we don't find that Arab were filthy, but Muhammad, he brought the filth to the Arab by making everyone, every human being, think of the women in a very, very bad way. This is this filthy man, perverted man. He is the prime minister of Pakistan. Pakistan, not Pakistan, as in English. So Pakistan, prime minister, he is a, as a Muslim, he's a genius. And he found out why there is a lot of rape in Pakistan. Okay, why? Explain to us, Pakistan Prime Minister. His direct impact was on his family system. When I was there, there was one of them. This whole concept of the world, what is this? The temptation... Hold on, let us uh, show you more of the screen so you can read the translation. Because now you cannot see it. Give me a second. Okay, now. temptation now temptation now There is no temptation in the society, brother, if you are wearing a veil. There is no temptation, you stupid idiot donkey. With those women who are getting raped there, they are wearing veil. 
And let me show you how your prophet, the faithy prophet Muhammad, he got tempted by a woman she is walking by and she was wearing a burqa. Was she? She was a Muslim woman wearing a burqa. Ah, my keyboard is acting bad. Uh oh. And my keyboard is typing the wrong letters. Hold on. We need to fix that. You see how, how this faith religion function? Can you believe it? So if you wear a veil, we will not rape you. Listen, Muslim woman. The Prime Minister of Pakistan, he just gave a license for every scumbag in the Pakistan country that if a woman, she is not wearing a veil, you can go to the judge and she say, you say, hey, she was not wearing a veil. I'm excused because if she was wearing the veil, I would not rape her. Can you believe how low, how filthy, how trashy, how garbage this religion is? Can you believe it? Okay, finally, our keyboard working fine. That's good. This is the filthy Muhammad, peace be upon him. A lot of peace on him. I mean, there is no, no, there's nobody in history was a criminal killer, rapist as he is. And they say peace upon him, Allah pray on him. Uh, I mean, you name it. This is Muhammad, a woman she walked by and she was wearing her veil and she's a Muslim woman. Jabir reported that Allah Messenger, may Allah be on him, saw a woman, so he came to his wife, Zainab. Okay, hold on, hold on. What, what do you mean he saw a woman? Hey, Muslims, what does that mean? He saw a woman. So he came to his wife, and she, his wife, she was tanning leather. And he forced his wife into sex. You know, imagine, I don't know if you know how the villagers all days, they used to do tanning uh, for the leather. It's a very, very tough process, boiling water, adding color, color putting the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the leather in, taking the leather out, etc. Just because he saw a woman. And then what he said? He did not say she is not wearing a veil and she made me horny. He said the women she advanced and retired in the shape of the devil. So the filthy Muhammad is tempted just by a woman walking by and she's a Muslim woman and she is not wearing bikini and there's no skirt at that time we have a filthy coward here his name is Muhammad Said get out of here I don't want to see you here you are a son of Muta for sure because any man who promote and he say this is a lesson for you Christian Prince when we are walking here in the street and I see women who they are wearing you know whatever wearing short skirt whatever I don't jump on them you know what well, you know why because Muhammad could not make me a dog if Muhammad was able to make you a dog then this is a different story I am a human the dog Muhammad will not make me a dog like him so if you are a Muslim and you believe that your wife and your sister and your mother deserve respect, you should know, you should teach your children that women are not a piece of bone or meat. The second you see it, you jump on her.
And just to show you the hypocrisy of this filthy man, this is his ex-wife, and this is when she was his wife. So based on this filthy man, his wife, she should be raped. This is his wife, and this is when she was his wife. This is why her name is his last name when she took this picture. It says, Jamima Khan, feet. This is the wife of this man. So he's asking people, if you see my wife, please rape her. But you need to understand that those coward leaders, if we can call them leaders, they do say things for the sake of election. Obviously, this man, he don't believe in a single word of what he's saying. But by saying it, you became an, a filthy creature for me. How come he is in, marrying to uh, this woman, and this is how she used to dress when she was his wife, she dressed long clothes when she go to Pakistan. Ah, because in Pakistan they will rape her. <laughs> so when she go back to England with him, she wear a short skirt. Ah. So the Prime Minister of Pakistan is saying to you, Islam made us very civil people. If a woman wearing a skirt, short skirt like this, she, we will rip her to pieces in my beautiful country, Pakistan. We know, we know. That's why I'm saying when she was his wife, somebody's saying to me she divorced him. Well, thank you very much. Do you want a picture with him? Actually, I have, I, I put in the screen a picture of, uh, of her with him. Hmm? What is this? This is the wife. This is the same wife. <laughs> He's a rich man. <laughs> and this and here you see how some women, I mean how in the world uh, even you marry such a man just because you have some pennies, what a quality of a woman you are. So she accept to put this in her head. What a transforming machine. When she was his wife, according to Naman Khan, his wife should be attacked. She's showing her hair and she is showing her chest and she is not wearing a veil as you see how you do that hmm? veil he is saying you need to wear a veil not only like wear conservative clothes no 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 you need to wear a veil how come when he was married she did not wear a veil. Hmm? What was the problem? He could not control her? She was controlling him? He was a bad Muslim? He repent to Allah now? Or because he knew what kind of people he have and he won to win the election? You know, Islam is the leader in Pakistan. 
It is a country of lead, brother. A lead in morality and because Islam has taken over the country. I mean, Islam took over a long time ago. And because Islam took over, my friend, this country became very moral. To the point, Pakistan became number one country in the world searching for porn. So now look what we did. We told everybody, everybody have to wear a veil. Islam, brother, Islam. And then everybody is searching for porn. Some people, they keep saying to me, he's divorced already from, we know, we know, what's wrong with the people? Why people are stupid? We know that the guy is divorced already. We are showing you when she was his wife, what she used to dress. What's wrong with people? Are you stupid or what? Why do you keep repeating saying she is divorced? We know she is divorced. We show you that when she is with him as a wife, she was not wearing the veil. He is saying if you don't wear the veil, men they will rape you. What's wrong with people? Nobody is listening. Too much hashish. Stop saying to me she is divorced. I mean, we knew that those Muslim men anyway, they will marry them just for fun. As you see, he don't respect her. Because if he respect her, and she is his wife, by what he is saying, he is saying now his wife is a whore. This is what he's saying. A woman, she is not wearing a veil, according to this filthy prime minister of Pakistan, the porn country. She is a whore. Again, somebody will come and say, oh, she divorced her. We know. I said from the beginning, his ex-wife, what's wrong with you? Drink some coffee if you're still asleep. So, if Islam is a religion of conservative, and Islam is a religion of making you behave, and Islam is a religion of controlling you to be a good person, why Pakistan is number one nation for a sex search? And it's called, according to, uh, this is Fox News, Pornistan. Do you see it? Pornistan? They got upset because Google published which the country is number one searching for sex. They get upset from the truth. It hurt. And what they sex, what they search for, they say they search rape sex. Look, look, they are number one sex with donkey. Sex with horse. Do you see what they are looking for? Camel sex. Normal sex, sex with dog, rape pictures, rape sex, child sex. So they are teaching the world about morality. And Islam, brother, we made us conservative, brother. But in every one of them phone, there is nothing but searching for sex and porn. What does that mean? That means Islam does not make you better, Islam makes you worse. You became obsessed with sex, and you live for sex. Islam strip you from your humanity. Like a normal human, maybe he live for, uh, 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 let us say, uh, 22 hours a day, a uh, normal human being, and maybe an hour or two he think about women or something, let's say human being as a man. With Islam, you are thinking about it 24 hours. Your heaven is porn.
even in the heaven of Islam, when Allah He promised Muslim men that they will have a lot of women for sex, look what He said to them. Because Islam make you believe that women are sexual property, sexual property. Even in the heaven of Allah, women who Allah He gave them to you to have sex with them, to rape them, they are not allowed to see other men. Chapter 55, verse number 72. So the mentality, the filthy mentality, is traveling with you to the heaven of the filthy. Muhammad aka Allah. Even there in heaven, which supposedly there's no sin, a Muslim is worried somebody is looking at my wife. There's a comedy, there's a Muslim guy, made by a Muslim by the way, this comedy is made by a Muslim. A Muslim guy, he went to go a picnic with his wife and his kids. So he went there early, nobody was there. And then a group of people sit in the right. So he put a curtain in the right side. Then a group of people sit in the left, so he put a curtain in the other side. Another a group in the other side, he put a curtain, so his wife, she said to him, so while we are here, let us go home. We are sitting between four curtains. So now you are in heaven, and you are going to sit with your wives between four curtains. But yet you are in heaven. I mean, nobody will jump over your window and no need for to worry about security and rape. But still, those women, brother, they are restrained. Do you see the word restrained? Islam made the women a sexual product to be used and abused. This is what the Quran says in chapter 3, verse number 34. Beat them. When a, when a woman, if you remember the hadith, when a woman she came and she was complaining about her husband, he wanna force her, he wanna rape her. And he did beat her to do that. What Muhammad he said to her? He said, he's right. If you think you can go back to your previous husband without him raping you, you are mistaken. And as you see, the woman, her husband, he beat her in order to force her into sex, and her skin became a greener than her clothing. Aisha, she said, the lady came wearing a green veil and explained, or so complained to her. Oh, Aisha, she's complaining to her for her husband and showed her a green spot in her skin caused by beating. It was a habit of ladies. To support each other look that look at the habit of the ladies look, look at this habit man <laughs> disgusting you know women are women what you can do it's a habit of ladies supporting each other you know no you cannot support each other get beaten you know that's it enjoy it you know this is why they say no man will be questioned for beating his wife no man should be questioned Why? Because if we question the man why he did beat his wife, we are stripping Islam from the reason to be a Muslim. All those gang who join Muhammad to be Muslims with him, they are seeking a privilege. So if we take the privilege from them, they believe Islam. All the privilege we see in Islamic cult is made for the man and the man only, and the women are just accessories. And why? Because Muhammad, he need those men to fight for him. It's not the women who will go and do jihad and kidnap some women for him. Even when Muhammad, he asked them to go and fight the Roman, he says, attack the Roman and get the blonde girls. Attack the Roman and get the blonde girls.
Is Muslim women now saved from rape? If there's rape in Saudi Arabia? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here we have a, a very well-known person. A Muslim lady was raped by her father-in-law. I thought Islam will prevent rape. She is raped by her father-in-law. Well, is it this is what Muhammad he did? He had sex with his daughter-in-law. <laughs> and Islam, brother, create a solution, brother, for rape. Let us see the solution. I want to see the solution. I'm interested. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ahzab, chapter number 33, verse number 59, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the believing women that when they go abroad, they should put on the cloak, they should put on the jilbab so that they shall be recognized and it will prevent them from being molested. Quran says, he Brothers and sisters, that will prevent them from being molested. Did you hear it? That will prevent them from being molested. You know what? I'm totally convinced that if those women are wearing the jilbab, jilbabiyah I mean well, this is stupid by the way because jilbabiyah is not a veil jilbabiyah is a dress everybody can used to dress at that time in the west and the east it doesn't matter stupid idiot donkey but let us show you are we really going to have decency if we wear the jalabiyah which he was talking about? This is the jalabiyah. Do you see it? This is the jalabiyah. Please don't forget to wear your jalabiyah. What is that? Is that a circus or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy okay brother they are wearing jalabiyah and look brother all of them they are wearing hijab and if you listen more you will see they are going to recite Allah 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 jalabiyah brother jalabiyah brother can solve all the problems Two women in the top of each other, and the other guy is shaking his butt with the other woman butt. And remember, all they are wearing hijab. Praise be to Allah. You can't even see their face. Brother. We are Muslims. We don't do what the kuffar do, brother. We don't. You like it, you don't. We don't. We are different. Islam teaches us, brother, a lot of things. I mean, I have to skip some pictures because some of them, they are totally weird. What is that? I mean, it's very moderate to have two women in the top of each other. Oh boy. Okay, let us forget this topic. <sighs> All right. So, as you see, those people, they speak about things if you go and you, you know, I, I've been in Asia, I've been in Thailand, I've been in many countries. And in the month of Ramadan, everybody from Saudi Arabia, you find them in, 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 in Thailand. You, they go in the Philippines, they go, etc. Seeking what? Are they seeking the beach? Are they? No, everybody knows what. Prostitution. Then they come back with all the aids they have and etc. And then they sleep with their wives. This is why 
you know, in Islamic countries, AIDS spread like fire. Why? Because a man have multiple partners, and all those men, 99% maybe, go abroad, have sex with the different women, as soon as they get a chance to do it, because Islam made them believe that you can't do that. You see, in Islam, there's always a solution to have sex with someone else. Muta as an example, as a solution. A zawaja friend, one a friend, you know, they call it zawaja friend. What does that mean? Oh, brother, I cannot really have sex with this woman unless she marry me. So we can marry for a few days as a friend. And then, brother, we have sex. And then when we are done, we go. That's it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You know? Or even travel marriage. If you have my book, Sex and Allah, you will see how they legalize all kind of prostitution, but they call it marriage. They call it marriage. The one saying to me, stop mocking, get out of here. You are a follower, the mockery prophet. The one who call women equal to dogs and donkeys. The man who said women are coming in the image of the devil and they live in the image of the devil. The man who says all non-Muslims are najis, filthy, dirty. The one who says they are kuffar. The one, I mean, all the names you call us and then you talk about mockery. What a coward you are. As you see, it is number one mockery countries, Islamic, you know, I mean, Islamic religion. And yet they say to you, stop your mockery. I'm not making a mockery. The one who make a mockery is your prophet. He's making mockery of you. He made you a sex maniac. He made you a sex toy. He made you stupid. That is a mockery. If your sister one day she go and somebody see her hair and then somebody rape her well don't blame the guy who raped her because simply uh, you know she is not wearing a veil sorry We just heard Zachary Naik telling you how to prevent rape. Then we go to a different topic. Pakistani Prime Minister says abusing Prophet Muhammad equiv equivalent to the Holocaust cause denial. Look, look, look at this. Uh, brother, what do you want to say to us? What do you mean, brother? In Lahore, supporters of the Tahrir Labaik Pakistan, or TLP party, gathered Friday, chanting religious slogans outside party headquarters. Their protest organized offline. Okay, hold on. Anyway, so they are chatting, and, and, the, and the, the prophet, if you insult the prophet, you have to go to jail. You know what? I challenge the Muslim to accept this. Anyone who insult a prophet, he go to jail. Because the first one who goes to jail is you. You insult everybody. You know, when you see, when you as a Muslim, you say Jesus is just a man, he is a, he's just a prophet, not God, that is an insult to me. So all of you should go to jail then. When you say Buddha is not God, well, this is their God, that's an insult. You go to jail. When you say the gods of the Hindus are fake, you go to jail. Do you dare to do it? Look who's talking. Look who is talking about insulting other people believe of followers of the insulting machine Muhammad. وَإِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ نَجِسْ Those who don't believe in Allah, they are najis, filthy, disgusting. Forbid them from entering our holy land.
no go zoom you see the muslims sometimes they come to us and they say do you know what they did in south africa brother what they did the white men they go in the bus and black men they go in the bus different bus well you have this long because before south africa based on religion and you have it until now and actually now the new crown prince i think he opened mecca for non-muslims islam is collapsing the rules of islam nobody want to believe in it and this is actually this is why i want this crown prince to become the coming king so islam will fly as soon as possible from saudi arabia if you search in google muslims only mecca and search for pictures Do you see it? Muslims only. Why? Because the Quran taught Muslims that we as a Muslim, we are supremacist. The rest are dogs and cats and animals for us. Actually, there's a guy, and we played this video before, He made a video saying, reciting the Quran, he's not making his own. Saying, brother, look at those cows. Look at those cows, which one is better? At least those cows are useful. At least those cows, we can get milk from them. Basically, I want to introduce you to the supremacist cult, racist cult, who believe that they are a race and it is higher than every other race. Some friends that we have over here. We've got some cows, as you can see, they look a bit vexed. I'm not going to get too close because they look a bit aggy. It's the cow gang. If you look like they're on this thing. Basically, brothers and sisters, just seeing the cows reminded me of an ayah in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the people who are misguided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they're more misguided than the cattle. That they are more astray than the cattle, right? Than these cows. And if you think about it, brothers and sisters, a human being, right, who doesn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has less value than these cattle right here. Because at least from these cattle and these cows, you can get milk. At least from these cows, you can get leather, you know? You can get something from them. There is some benefit that comes from these cows. Despite how, you know, if you look at them as an animal, you know, they're alhamdulillah, they're a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they're not the most intelligent animal. You know, they're not the most, you know, like you can see flies all around them. And, but a person who's misguided, a person who's astray, a person who doesn't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has less value on this earth than these cows. Because these cows, like I said, at least they produce some fruits, some meat can come from them, some milk can come, some leather can come. But what is going to come from a human being who is misguided? What is going to come from a human misguided? Look, he have a Mercedes Benz behind him, made by the human being who is misguided. This donkey, he have a Mercedes Benz behind him, made by the Kufar. The camera is using, made by the Kufar. The clothes he's wearing, all of it is made in China, made by the Kufar. The phone he's using is made by the Kufar. Even the cows there are owned by the Kufar. And he's asking you, what the Kufar prefer, brother? At least the cows, they have milk. Well, this is a question I want to give it to you. What do you provide? Can we milk you? Like the Prophet Muhammad was squeezed by the angel three times and no mayonnaise came out? This is the supremacist cult. They believe that they are the highest and don't blame them. This is coming all from the garbage of the filthy Muhammad. He is the biggest criminal. Muhammad, he told them that you are the best of mankind, Muslims. 
And because you are the best of mankind, I give you authority to go and bring everyone is not a Muslim and put a chain around his neck like a dog. The Quran chapter 3 verse 110, the supremacy verse. The supremacy verse of the Arab. You are the best of mankind. And when the Muslim, they say to you, this is for the benefit, brother, for the benefit. But they will not tell you what benefit we are talking about. Read carefully. You are the best people ever raised for, the, between two bracket, the benefit. You see the benefit? Oh, come on, you see the word benefit? Benefit, brother, of mankind. And they will cut you there. They will not tell you what this is mean. They will say, see, the Muslims been ordered to be given benefit for mankind. And then says, the best for mankind are those who bring them with the chains around their necks till they embrace Islam. And by doing that, we force them to convert to Islam, brother, and they will not go to hellfire. Look how merciful this religion is. Look how beautiful, brother. I feel like I want to cry. And then you will find a bunch of atheists and feminists and all this crazy stuff. They say to you, we love Islam. <laughs> what? We love Islam. <laughs> well, Islam says beat the women. We love Islam. Okay. <laughs> this is a supremacist cult. They've been taught and they've been trained to believe that they are the best of mankind and everyone else have to die or convert, or become a slave. Choose one. Which one? For me, I believe I would love to die as a man of a freedom. There's no life for coward. No meaning. Coward. You live like a dog. No point of this life. Somebody's asking, saying, Islam is a, is a growing. My friend, Islam is dying so fast. Islam is so dying so fast to the point they are trying to silence those who expose Islam. Do you see, all of this is a, is a sign of a clear weakness. When they go crazy, stop insulting the Prophet because this is, was not used to happen before. Nobody dared to say anything. Things are changing. Islam is dying so fast. Muslims leaving Islam left and right. They don't, you know, Muslims, they, they make video. If somebody convert to Islam, they spread the video all over. But when somebody leaves Islam, he will not make a video because this is a religion of terrorism. According to Al Jazeera TV, there's 6 million Muslims leaving Islam a year. Al Jazeera TV. And the Sheikh was crying, saying, nobody have the right, nobody right have the right to make Muslim leave Islam. But they have the right to make you leave your religion and come to Islam, right? But we have no right to make you leave Islam, brother. Six millions a year, and this was many years ago. And now with the satellite, and now with the internet, and now the Muslim, they start seeing the stupidity and the garbage of Muhammad, and they are leaving left and right. And they think by doing more aggressive things, they can stop it. But as you see, anything now happening in this world is going to be in the social media in two seconds. ISIS was exist for the last 1400 years, but nobody saw a video of ISIS before. And then when ISIS start practicing the true Islam, Muslims, they start writing articles saying, ISIS is not Islam. And I challenge any Muhammadan to show me one thing ISIS did is not Islamic. Ah, uh, do you remember the video where ISIS, they put chains around the women from the Yazidi and the Christians, you remember them? They took them as slaves. Oh, they are not doing that, brother. This is not Islamic. Well, here we go. Slaughtering, killing, raping. And Muhammad, he claimed 
that if we bring you and the chain in your neck and we make you a slave and you convert to Islam, and we will keep you as a slave, by the way, because they did that to many, many who they are slaves, they converted to Islam so they will not be abused extra, but they will not let them go free. Actually, Muhammad himself, he did not let Bilal go free. See, the Muslim, they keep saying Bilal, Bilal. First of all, if Muhammad is a prophet against slavery, why he have Bilal anyway? Muhammad himself, he have tons of women for sex purpose, not to wash dishes. I used to play with dolls sometime of the messenger and he entered upon me and we have the girls. Look at the translation. The, 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 the English translation says girls. In Arabic it says Jawari, my slaves. You see how they lie even in translation just to cover up? A man who had women and slave girls could have intercourse with all of them before he did gosel. Do, do you see what we are talking about? A man who have wives and he have slave girls, he can have sex with all of them. I mean, what kind of a man he is going to have sex with all of them before he wash? How many? How many times you want to have sex? Perverted cult? Muhammad and the faith of Muhammad. I noticed that the messenger of Allah was missing. Oh, oh, Muhammad is missing. Like what? Muhammad is missing. And I thought he had gone to visit one of his one of his what? Six slaves. How many he have? But I actually said I was wrong. I thought he is doing that as usual. I thought he had gone to visit one of his sex slaves. How many he have? You notice right away that the second you join this cult, you will become a sex maniac. You know, like, do you know the display in a store? In the display, when they want to sell a product, they have a spotlight. What is the purpose of the spotlight? Is to get your eyes' attention on where the light is, and then you will see the product. Islam make the women a woman in display by putting her in the purka. Because now she is a sexual object, wherever she go. And when the man he see anything of this woman, he will consider it as an invitation. Anything. Oh, she showed me her face. Oh, I see her hand. The man he got aroused. And now Muslim men are not even getting married in Saudi Arabia. 
because of YouTube and internet, the average of marriage is very low. Why? Well, he look at the one in, you know next to him, and the one is in the YouTube. Look how beautiful she is there. I'm gonna go there. I remember when I was in the Middle East. One day, you know, in the Middle East, like you have, it's different. Like the way the way the buildings is done. So like the, all everything's concrete. So you know, I was in the roof. We have like a nice yard in the top of the roof, and suddenly everybody is fixing his satellite. The whole town is in the roof. Afternoon, I went to walk. I was like a teenage. And then the kids who they are in my age, they say, "Did you change the direction of the satellite?" I said, "Why?" They said, "Because the six channels they are in different satellite now." And then I understood why our neighbor Sheikh. Muhammad was changing the satellite and why the other neighbor and why the other everybody is in the roof everybody when I saw them in the roof working satellite I said what happened so I went downstairs it's working everything is working fine you know TV is working but the porn channels brother they are moved to different satellite so everybody is adjusting his satellite This is why Islam did not bring anything civil to the life of a human being. Wherever Islam goes, filth come. This is why Pakistan earning number one word in search for pornographic terms. And notice here, in the article, they are saying that the Muslims are so ab so upset from publishing this in the internet. They were so upset from Google, so now Google will not do it again, supposedly. So Google is saying that Pakistan is number one in the world search for pornographic terms, outranking every other country in the world. Pakistan is top dog in search for per person horse sex. I wonder what is making you excited when you watch horse sex. You are a person who pray five times a day to Allah. And now you have a break from work and you want to entertain yourself. I go in Google and search for horse sex wow since 2004 brother you broke the record donkey sex since 2007 aren't you upset that there is somebody before you he was number one oh, by the way why did not put number one before number seven we will see come on we will see which country <laughs> and then since 2007 ray pictures between 24 and 29 rape sex between since 24 six child child sex but this is a country where everybody were burqa so obviously islam and burqa is making you more obsessed and mad with sex did not make you a better person it did not provide you with any solution. So my friends, Islam obviously is a very evil cult. And Islam made the women a sexual object in every way, in every verse in the Quran. A Muslim want to join jihad for one reason, not because he believes in Allah, just to get the versions. There's tons of videos of Al-Qaeda and ISIS, they are quoting what their prophet says. Brother, when you enter heaven, brother, women, they will jump on you. One, she will be sucking your... And the other one, she will be sucking... And the other one, she will be sucking... And the other one, she will be sucking... I mean, what's sucking? They will suck... Are they bad, men, bad women or what? So you enter the room and they will jump in the top of you. You don't even have it... Like, you will be raped, literally. And the Muslim like, wow, I cannot wait for that, brother. Man, I want to go on suicide now, join ISIS. 
I die after two minutes I will be in my room and women you idiot you will have no penis anyway you will become shish kebab Allah will make me have a even when their prophet he promised them a penis even have you have you ever heard a prophet he promised them endless penis which religion promise you a penis will never go sleep Huh? Just I'm wondering, what is the religion which will make you hear such a thing? What kind of a prophet? What kind of God? Why does God is so obsessed? with penises and vagina and the funny the Muslim they say to me Christian Prince why you keep talking about things I am the one who's talking about it I'm not talking about it. it's your prophet I'm just reading what he's saying they will come and say are you why you keep talking about sex 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 are you obsessed with sex? With, oh, with the, show, show me one thing in your religion except sex. What is in your sex? What is this? Okay, now I became a believer. I'm going to go to heaven. Have you ever heard Allah told Muhammad that your penis will never go sleep? He told him that. This is the holy message of Allah by the holy message of the Prophet to the holy believers. A brothers and sisters, you will have a penis will never go limp. Good news. We 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 we. And brother, Allah will take the prostitutes. By the way, there's a good news for prostitution in according to Islam because Allah, if you are really good looking, according to Islam. Allah will import you for sex to make the Muslims happy. Allah will import you, literally. Inheritance of hellfire, women. Allah will take them from there. Why? Because those women, they have nice, desirable front passages. I don't know what is that exactly. Yeah, Muslims, anyone can help us? What is the desirable front passages which is going to qualify you to get a job in the heaven of Allah and you will enter the heaven of Allah even if you are coming from hell? And what is the connection between those desirable front passages and your penis will never go limp? There's any connection? This is a decent religion, brother. We follow Prophet Muhammad. He taught us decency. And we are decent. Even when they're God, he want to resurrect people from the ground, from the death. You saw the video, right? Allah will do ejaculation. Allah will do what? He will do ejaculation. And then his ejaculation will cover the earth and then all the dead will come. And I have a video about it already. And actually I was playing a video of a Muslim who was questioning this story. I heard that this guy, he deleted his video, right? <clears throat> Abu Layth? Did he? Uh, somebody told me that he deleted after I made a video about it. But I think it's too late already. People have, you know. So it was a Muslim who was asking himself.
What kind of a prophet saying that? He's not talking about the prophet. He's saying he didn't accept the hadith. You see, when the Muslim, they say something very stupid. I'm trying to find the video he played for us. Well, I find my video is not the video he said. Oh boy. The best form of charity. Okay, commercial. The guy, he could not believe that this is an authentic hadith. And he was trying to, like, come on, this is no way. Since is that. We can say that the Quran strongly suggests, the Quran seems to have a very strong indication that uh, Isa is coming. However, it is not definitive and it is not conclusive in and of itself. Abis hello, this is strong. <laughs> strong people, strong suggestion. Pay attention. Just from the language of the Quran and just from the context of the Quran, we give it the presumption, but not the certainty. <laughs> so that's the strong inkling, strong suggestion Jesus is coming in the Quran. It's not actually anywhere in the Quran, but khair, strong. As for the hadith, this is where, of course, the issue becomes uh, crystal clear. Then the hadith is no doubt now. The, the heart, doubt has been killed. There is no doubt. The number of Sahaba from whom uh, this hadith is narrated is around uh, um, uh, around 10 or so. We have Abu Huraira, we have Jabir ibn Abdullah, ibn Mas'ud, ibn Umar, Aisha, Samura ibn Jundub, Imran ibn Hussein, Abdullah ibn Abdullah ibn Aas, Hudayfa, uh, Thawban, and in fact one or two more. Uh, there's a hadith of Ibn Mas'ud. He, he mentioned Ibn Mas'ud. Ibn Mas'ud. First of all, Ibn Mas'ud begins by saying that the Christians claim Jesus will come back. You see this belief creeping in. But Brothers and sisters, the Christian claim, the Christian claim, the Christian claim. I mean, when I say those people, they are ignorant in their religion. Stupid and do not know what they are talking about. The Christian claim, brother, the Christian claim. It's not the prophet to claim. <laughs> Brother, this is the Christian claim. Brother, the prophet said, I swear by Allah, the one who have my soul, that the son of Mary, Jesus, will shortly descend on you. And this is, by the way, this is a false prophecy because he said, which means is almost there. Not only is going, it's not a prophecy about the future, he's almost down. Do you see it? The Christians say, the Christians say, that. I mean, this is what happened when you get a kid trying to refute somebody he have knowledge. Anyway, check this out. Check this out. More interesting people. I want to bring your attention. Hmm. Elaborate detail on the end of time. What's going to then happen is look at all of this. What will, he goes through in, you know, Details, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, a wind is going to come, Ya'juj, Ma'juj are going to come, people are going to die, all this stuff. But then what's going to happen after this utter destruction? Now, this is the hadith. He was saying, Yahya, uh, 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 Yasir Qadi, that we can't question with reason. Put together, too many of the Sahaba have narrated it, and therefore, uh, predominant, you know, Sunni methodology basically is that mutawatir a hadith. Uh, are certain you feed al qata it's not vanni it's not something that is subjective it is something that is certain the notion of rejecting mutawatir a hadith simply because it is not rational right that's to me the fundamental uh difference between this strand of islam versus the bulk of ahl sunnah or the bulk of sunni islam so now check this out what does the hadith say at the end when there's utter destruction 
how will this be brought back? Then Allah will say, now, <laughs> I have to translate this, so brace yourselves, people. Allah will send, there's a fluid from beneath the arsh which will ejaculate like the sperm of men. <laughs> I, I'm whoa, people. Let me repeat. Look at it for yourselves. Thumma yursilu Allahu ma'an. Allah will send down on earth, shower down on earth, fluid from beneath His arsh. So beneath His throne, there's a collection of fluid, which is kamaniyir rijal, which is like the sperm of men. <laughs> This is going to shower down on the globe. And what's going to happen is this is going to then give birth to, uh, to once again life. So sperm. <laughs> so for that, people, I had to. Had to yeah. So. <laughs> Stop. This is what happened to a Muslim when he read his books. He opened an umbrella to cover his head from the ejaculation of Allah. And this is what they do when they listen to me. In order to protect themselves from the ejaculation of the books of Islam, because it is disgusting, it is a stupid, it is a crazy. So what they try to do? They open an umbrella and say, I don't see you, I don't hear you. You don't open an umbrella when Zachary Nayak is talking. But that's it. I put the dark with him. And I'm going to answer him. And for the world, Allah has a dark with him. For the world, the Quran says it is he. And obviously, he is a man. And he has a dark with him. And please sit there. Put your umbrella down. There's no sun. Say, brother, I'm not opening the umbrella because of the sun. There's no sun, but it's just spitting all over the place. This is Islam. Even resurrection is done by ejaculation of Allah. And this Muslim guy, he could not believe it that this is in his book. But you believe it or not, who care? It's there. It is there. You don't want to believe it? Is it up to you? Is it up to you to Cancel what Muhammad said? Are you making fun of what your prophet said and what Allah said to him? Then Allah will say, now <laughs> I have to translate this, so brace yourselves, people. Allah will send, there's a fluid from beneath the arsh which will ejaculate like the sperm of men. <laughs> I, I'm whoa, people. Let me repeat. Yeah, look at it for yourselves. Thumma yursilu Allahu ma'an. Allah will send down on earth, shower down on earth, fluid from beneath His arsh. So beneath His throne, there's a collection of fluid, which is kamaniyir rijal, which is like the sperm of men. <laughs> This is going to shower down on the globe. And what's going to happen is this is going to then give birth to, uh, to once again life. So now where Muhammad is getting this, this is from the God of uh, uh, Baal. You know Baal? Allah is Baal, the same God. Like they have different names, but obviously the same method. Baal, the people in the old days, those who believe in Baal, Baal, he ejaculate and then spring come. And women get fertility, and even even animals they have babies. That is Baal who fertilizes everything. Allah is the same as Baal. It's different God, different name, different territory. The God of fertility, my friend, the one who's saying Abu Hamid, that South Korea is going to hand over Rahat John Austin to Islamic State of Pakistan. Okay, let me ask you. Why we Christian don't give support for this guy? 
If you are Pakistani people who support freedom for your country, why you don't organize yourself and ask some Christians to join you? And I'm sure many they will join you. Those who live where the, uh, the embassy, there's many embassy for South Korea. There's one in California, there's one, etc. Go, do something. Make a big sign. Don't do that. You know, let people talk about it. If you want to help this guy, do something. Posting in a chat only is useless. If you want to help this guy, really, if we really care for this man to be saved from deported to Pakistan, and we know what will happen, and I wonder why, why even South Korea would do such a crime when this country majority is a Christians. So stop complaining, do something. Those who care, they do. Not only they talk about it. And please, next time, don't say the word ex-gen. Don't shorten the name of Christ. Christians, not ex-gen. We are not ex and Christ is not ex. Stop being negative and be positive. Do something. Go now, contact all the Christian Pakistani churches. Says, hey, you guys, all the ministers on those churches, contact other ministers. Let us do a, make a movement and save this person. And then the media will start talking about, and then South Korea will not deliver this person. But if nobody care, then nobody care. And remember one thing. If you think that you can do nothing, you are mistaken. If you think you are just an individual and you are a weak and you are not important, you are mistaken. You are weak when you decide to be weak. And you are strong as army when you decide to be strong. I can show you in my email how many strike I got from Pakistani government complaining to YouTube. The Pakistani government, a country who have nuke, they are worried. They are saying those videos are a threat for our security. You Christians are weak when you decide to be weak. When you decide just to watch. You are strong when you do something about it. And we are very strong. But the problem became, we became so much, uh, I mean, uh, uh, okay, we trust the Lord, we trust the Lord. Okay, my friend, the Lord says, said to you, work and I am with you. The people of the Lord are working people. Pakistan is not worried about that the country became number one six porn star country in the world. They are worried about my videos. And each time I open my email, I find YouTube sending me, we receive a complaint, legal complaint from the government of Pakistan. We showed you already many of them. No, I don't want to unblock Saeed. Let him go. We are done with this kid. You say it one more time, I will block you too. We have no time for kids. So, when this religion speak of dignity, you should know better that this religion have no dignity. Their prophet, even he allowed them to have rent, to rent women. Have you ever heard of a religion that says you can rent women? How you can do that? And this is God teaching. It's God teaching to rent a woman. And they explain to you how Islam teach, brother, that renting women is the best thing to do, brother.
renting women. The four pillars of muta. Okay, what is the four pillars of muta? They explain to you that it has pillars. Look, 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 this is very well organized religion. Pillars, pillars, brother. We have pillars, pillars of prostitution. Okay, what is the pillars? Can you tell us about the pillars, brother? In some work, a special term is applied to women who participate in muta, mustajara. Mustajara in Arabic mean or rented women. Muta is considered as a kind of rental because in general, main basic aim is the kind of this marriage. Marriage, they call it marriage. Look at this. Is sexual enjoyment of the women. So they say to you, Burka, they say to you, we are conservative. They say to you, my friend, this religion is the most lousy, hippie cult ever exists for mankind. It is sex perverted establishment from sex with the children to sex with men to sex with women and by the way there's a guy he posted uh, like in Ezekiel it says that the, the, the lost and have sex with the with etc and this my friend you stupid idiot this is about a city this is about a city this is not about a woman you are stupid and don't like your prophet the whole city there's two cities This is not about one woman having sex with a camel, you idiot, with horses. But for someone like you, watching Zach and Nike, obviously you are super intelligent. Actually, we have a clear verses in the Bible that if you have sex with animals, what the punishment? In the Quran, there is no such thing. I turn to show me where in the Quran it says, if you have sex with animals, you will be punished. You will say to me in the Hadith, why Muhammad trying to to copy the Jews? I can show you the fatwa. It says that having sex with animals during the Hajj will not destroy your Hajj. Your Hajj is valid. So if you are interested in renting women, Islam is what you deserve, you know, you, you should you should, you should have. So when those people they say to us, like this is uh, the, the 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 prime minister of Pakistan, I understand very well the game. This guy he knew what kind of people he is going to vote for him. In order to win the election, always before the election they do something. They prepare themselves for the election. If you remember, when uh, when uh, a Christian, he became the mayor of Jakarta in Indonesia. To get rid of him, the guy, he just said, those people, they are using Islam for the sake of election. They put him 40 years in jail and they strip him from his job as a mayor when he's saying the truth. Why they are against him? Because he's a Christian. You cannot put the mayor, he's a Christian. So what if he's a good man? So what if people love him? So what if he's perfect for the job? Still he's a Christian. So the guy, he said, those people, they are using religion for the election. Just for saying that, he did not make insult of Muhammad. He did not say anything. That's not like me talking now, nothing. Because of what he said, they are using Islam for election, for politics. They strip him from his job. They send him to jail. <sighs> Can you show us the Hajj verse having sex with animal? Oh, this is not a. This is not a uh, verse. This is not a verse. Actually, the Quran doesn't have verses anyway. Uh, 
Let us see. <clears throat> um, here we go and I will give you a link you know for those but this is not a verse in the Quran the Quran does not speak about this Let us see. I will give you the official website. This is official, actually. This is IslamWeb.com. This is the fatwa number 214033. And this is the date of it. وبه قال الشافعي وأبو ثور ويتخرج في وطئ البهيمة أن الحج لا يفسد به وهو قول مالك وأبي حنيفة So two Islamic Sunni sect the biggest and I think this guy uh, the Prime Minister of uh, Pakistan he is a Hanifa saying that if you have sex with an animal that will not make your hajj invalid Also, there is no differences difference between sexual intercourse in the vagina or in the back passages. Wherefore, from a human or a beast, accordingly, a Shafi'i and Abu Hanifa said, and Abu Thawr, he said, this is the, the biggest names, the Hajj is not spoiled by it if you have intercourse with animals. Do you see it? Even if you have Sex with a human, man with a man, homosexuality, in the animal. This is the translation. Let me check the, the original. Let us go to the original. This is the book of Kitab al Mughni, page number. Uh, let's see which page this one doesn't say which page we will find it uh, because it shows many pages in the same link. All right, here. So what they are talking about, if you have sex with the animal, you know, it's okay. There's no problem. No problem. And this is two or three of the biggest sect of the Muslim Sunni. The Muslim Sunni, there are four. Shafi'i, Malik, Abu Hanifa, they have no problem if you have sex with the animal during the Hajj and that will not destroy your Hajj. What do you want more? Let me find you a link I can share. Here we go. This is a link we can share. This is better because I show you the hay directly. But it's in Arabic. You have to use Google Translation. You can save it in your reference. All right. And this is a very official Islamic website. This is islamweb.net. And this is the page number, the book of Al Mughni, value number three, page number 160, hadith number 2387. This is Islam. And always I need to warn you 
that when uh, Muhammadan they speak about adultery as an example, they say to you, Islam is against adultery. For Muslims, adultery is different from adultery for us. For Islam, promote adultery. Actually, there's verses in the Quran say clearly and showing you what the Muslim used to do with the slave girls. Slave girls, they've been forced into prostitution in the time of Muhammad. Women, Muslim women, they complain that their men, they became pimps. Muhammad, because he cannot make his men angry, and he liked the idea, actually, of making good money. He says, force not your girls into prostitution. And if you force them, Allah is all merciful. There is no punishment, there is no penalty, and it's okay. And this is telling you that Islam promotes prostitution in the time of Muhammad, and Muhammad never made a punishment for prostitution. Force them not if they choose a state chastity, which means give them a choice. If they like to work in prostitution, then there is no sin. This is a chapter 24, verse number 33. And if you force them, Allah is all merciful. That's it. Don't worry about it. Do you see it? So don't be fooled when they say to you, Islam is against prostitution, Islam is conservative, Islam is the most lousy. Have you ever heard of a prophet, he ordered women to give their boobs to an adult man to suck it? I mean, what kind of conservative religion this religion is? Have you ever heard of this before? Let us see. Each time Aisha, she want to have uh, somebody to enter her house to meet with her, you have to go and suckle the nipples of her sisters or her nieces. Let us show you the hadith. Let me find it. Here we go. You see how conservative? So we Muslims, we force women to wear burqa, and the burqa will prevent you from prostitution and prevent you from temptation. But we order our women to give their boobs to strangers. Hmm? Anyone want to enter upon Aisha, he have to go and suckle her sisters. I look at the first one, I say, give milk. It says, give milk. Give milk. <laughs> give milk. <laughs> so whenever a man, she wanted to be able to come and see her, she ordered her sister, Umm Kathum, been to Abu Bakr, and, and the daughters of her brother, to suckle, not to give milk. Look at the funny translation, give milk. <laughs> Why, she's a cow? <laughs> hey, brother, I drink my milk, and that will make you able to see the wife of the prophet alone in the bedroom. <laughs> the word suckling became give milk. Perverted cult. 
That is Islam, my friend. <laughs> Give milk, huh? Mm. Actually, there is a there was a Muslim Sheikh in Twitter. He was talking about this. What the Prophet taught, and we should follow it. You know, I mean, why, why we should not? This is what the Prophet said. And there is a kid, his name is Mimi Hijab, if you remember him. This guy, he said, because I said the same thing to a Muslim woman. He said, sexual predator, Christian prince. Sexual predator. And then look, look at the coward. Look, 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 look. Okay, can I suck your wife's tit and make her haram? He is debating with the sheikh. The sheikh is reading the hadith of the prophet, ordering Muslim women to give their boobs to strangers. Mimi Hijab, who said that because I said the same thing, but I did not say to the women, I said to her, suck on me. The prophet says, suck on me. He made video says, Christian prince, sexual predator. Sexual predator, brother. Sexual predator. And look at the filthy coward. I said to the women who called me, who she said that Jesus was doing the same for his mother, she is a filthy. They said he is sexual predator for quoting their prophet. And now look what he is saying. Okay, can I suck your wife? And then a Muslim he said to Mimi Hijab, What kind of mannerism are these? Shame on you, Muhammad. This is Islam. This is what happened when a Muslim, he tried to reject what his prophet is saying. I mean, the sheikh is saying to you what the prophet said. What's the problem? Are you making fun of the prophet? Yes, we make fun of the prophet. Why not? And he make it like he is making fun of the guy, not the prophet, but the fact he's making fun of his religion. Right? So, I want to say thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you all. And by the way, those who are downloading my videos, uh, somebody says that some he download the video from somebody and that buddy, you know, flag him. First of all, I say to the one who flagged that person without saying his name, it's not, a, it's not right to flag other person because you yourself taking my videos. Now, if you are saying I'm serving the Lord, then you should ask people to do download your video, even if you add a translation, and this is your work. Because remember, this is my work too. So if you are truly serving the Lord, you are not worshiping yourself, then you should not be upset from people downloading the video, which is made by you, and they load it different place. You should be happy for that. But if you are not serving the Lord, then you are serving yourself. You want to worship me, 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 me. So if somebody take my video, that is my video then, that's me, me, I'm worshiping myself. Don't claim that you are serving the Lord. You are just serving yourself. You want just more subscribers. So if somebody did that to you, tell people about what he did, because obviously he's not serving of the Lord. In the same time, don't download from him, download from me. Here we go. I will finish download it. All right. Always you need to remember to stop if you are really a person who believes in Christ. Not to think about yourself. I don't care if I have one subscriber or 10,000 or a million. For sure I like more so more people will come, right? But at the end of the day, all your subscribers are mine because they are listening to me anyway. Is it about numbers on my page or numbers everywhere so people they can see the truth? Are we trying to serve the truth, serving the Lord, or we are serving a person who have his own ego, who want people to worship him? If you are a servant of the Lord, you wash the feet of the people. And this is how we wash your feet, with knowledge. We cleanse your feet from the dirt of this earth. So my friend, be a servant for the Lord, don't be a servant of your own. Because if you do so, you and your ego will go with you, or your ego. You will die soon, nobody will remember you. And the Lord even will not remember your work, 
because he will say to you many they will say to me Lord Lord God God I say depart away from me I do not know you they said we did all the work for you we did even miracles in your name he said you did not do it for mine my glory your glory so don't be one of those serve the Lord from your heart love the Muslims we don't hate them we are speaking against Islam and we are trying to save them from this garbage it's called Muhammad Islamic supremacist cult don't hate don't teach violence if you want to help the guy in South Africa the one who is they are going to deport him start right now contact your minister in a church say hey there's a guy this is what will happen to him let us do something if you are Pakistani or not I wish I can do the same I don't have any minister to, to contact really I don't do I don't do business with the churches sadly because I don't they don't most of them they don't like what I do my topic is very aggressive they want to spend their day just doing sermon and rituals nobody want to fight for the truth but if you go to church and I encourage you to go find a good church to go to find a good man to listen to tell them let us do something you can have a you know peaceful strike in the front of the South African embassy TV stations will come call newspapers TV stations so they will know about you, you are there and be sure to do it legally don't break the law don't be savage don't use violence you are a Christian remember that do it legally there's embassies everywhere in every country talk to your church see how you can organize it contact the authority if the, if you need to get a license for that in case you need it and then stand with this poor man who is going to be deported do something right do something this person now god knows what he is thinking the whole world left me alone nobody care for me if i am a famous man if i am important man the whole world will talk if i'm a muslim the whole world will talk about him but he's a pakistani christian and we knew how they are treated so what we do we just watch what's happening why not all the pakistani they organized all the Pakistani in, Af in, 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 in USA, in Europe, etc., go and make a strike in the front of the South African embassy. Don't give this man, you have no right, because we know what will happen to him. Or what is a crime, what he did. Like if he's a criminal, if he's a rapist, send him back. If he kills somebody, send him back. But you give him back because of his belief? And this country supposed is a Christian country? So do something. Yeah, contact them, contact, contact, my friend. Just do something, do something. If we don't work, if I don't decide one day that, you know what? My English is funny. You, you hear Muslim making fun of my English some, from time to time, right? My English is funny. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a stranger. Uh, and then I'm going to go in the internet and I want to debate people. I want to show them the truth about Islam. How, how impossible the mission. You know what I'm saying? First time, first time I remember I entered a chat room. Just to show you how the mission was very hard on me. I entered the chat room and instead of saying hello guys because my English is funny I said hello this I'm going to type it for you and then right away they start cursing me and I was said what's wrong with those American I just said hello to them I said hello guys
Do you, do you notice how bad it was? How hard, how impossible it is? Like what? Why they are cursing me what I did? I felt really bad. I felt like what, what happened to them? It's like I put guys on them. Like what happened? What's wrong with those people? So I went to the second chat room. I said the same. They did the same. Like what the heck? <laughs> What's wrong with those people? They are crazy American people, you know? Like it's not me who was driving in the opposite highway direction. So my friend, sometimes the mission, it sounds like it's impossible. But if you are a person who believe that you can make a difference, you can. Go and see in Indonesia how many, how, if, we, if we say now how many people in Indonesia they knew about me, you will not believe it. I'm, I'm nobody. I mean, who, who am I? I'm no one. I'm not a bishop. I'm not a priest. I don't have a church to teach in. Uh, you know, I'm just a person who have, let us say, I have extreme knowledge of the garbage of Muhammad. That's it. And I never thought even I can write books in English. That would be crazy. But the Lord always provides people who help you to fix your grammar, to fix your English, to make it better, etc. So I write what I can write, and then people they volunteer to help my grammar to fix it. Don't always overthink this way. If you don't jump in the ocean, you will never learn how to swim. You will never. Be strong and be a believer. When you are a believer, there is nothing is called mission is impossible. And now we have my books translated to many, many languages. Russian, Polish, uh, somebody now working in the Romanian, we have Indonesians, we have Albanian, Bosnian, uh, uh, Croatian, uh, we have uh, German, we have uh, uh, Dutch, uh, uh, we have a French. I mean, imagine my, my books are translated to all languages in the world and most of them is given, given them for free. Isn't it amazing what one person can do? So imagine if every one of you, he says, I can do the same and even better. The Lord, he gave every one of you as a gift. And sometimes your fear prevent you from using your gift. You are, you are afraid to be laughed at. You are afraid that people will make fun of you or whatever. Don't worry about the people. There's always people who will appreciate you. People do not know you until they see your quality. And this is the question, do you have a good quality or not? So my friends, work, serve the Lord, pray for the Muslims, we love them, we don't hate them, but for sure Islam is nothing but evil, Islam is nothing but of the devil. We people who love peace, and because we love peace, we are fighting Islam. As simple as that. South Korea, South Korea, the guy in South Korea. Somebody post his name in the comment section, please. Post his name, tell everybody to contact his church. Help this guy, you know, and always do the same. You do not need invitation. When you see somebody discriminated, just for because of his faith, Especially his faith is not teaching hate and killing. Why you wanna why you wanna do that to him? What he did? Like this guy, he believed that Jesus said to him, Love your enemy. Is that a crime? This guy he believed Muhammad is a fraud. Oh, it's a crime. I wanna always, by the way, I know that people don't need my my thanks for those who support us because i don't talk about it like i go alive on air i should you know I, I go i never said anything about donation but i'm very thankful for those people who support us because if they are not doing that i will not be able to give my books for free
I feel so happy that millions and millions of Indonesian are getting my books for free in their own language. And I hope somebody now is working in Chinese translation. I cannot wait to see my first book in Chinese. That would be so beautiful. Because there's more than a billion, actually what billion? I think there's maybe two billion human beings who speak Chinese. Either they live in China or they live around the world. Read the truth about Islam in the Chinese language. And imagine, all those people who translate my books, they do it voluntarily and for free. See how the Lord always provides you? Do you see how He supports you? I did not pay a penny for any of my book's translation. So sometimes I get upset from the Christians because not too many they are, you know, interested in, in fighting for a truth. But there is many, they are good people. And they are doing a really great job, and they did. And they are from all the churches. Protestant, Catholic, Orthodox. I have people working in translation from everywhere. This is what makes us one church. The Messiah, the love of the Messiah. The priests that divide us, Christ, he unites us. And this is why the devil, he hate me. The devil, sometimes he tried to test me, to make me divide the Christians, as many priests they do. As the Quran said, in chapter 5, verse 14, Allah he said he will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians until the day of judgment. We will not let that happen. We will not serve the devil, Allah, Aka Muhammad. We will not allow anyone to spread hatred between us as a Christians. And even, we don't hate Muslims. Imagine if you are a Christian and you don't believe that you should love your enemy, then you are not a Christian. So how do you love your enemy, but you cannot love your brother in Christ? Christ unite us, the devil divide us. And based on this, remember this always, who is the one behind dividing the Christians? It is the devil. It is not from Christ. We are one church and we have one master. I wanna say thank you all, all of you for being here. May the Lord bless you and uh, Maybe tomorrow we'll have a new topic. Don't forget to subscribe uh, if you did not yet. And if you are already, don't forget to unsubscribe because Allah will give you a blessing for doing that. The good deed, bad deed. Bad cup, good cup, Allah. Uh, so, Core CP is his book is so bad. For sure, my book is so bad. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about Allah, what do you expect? Like, hello? A Muslim saying my book is bad. My friend, this is an honor degree for me to say my book is bad because if my book is good to you, that means I said nothing there. Do you understand, people? If a Muslim, he says the books of a Christian prince is good, that means you should not read it, period. That means those books are bad for you. They are fraud then. When a Muslim, he says the book of a Christian prince, the books of a Christian prince, they are bad. That means that's a good, wonderful book. If Muslims, they come here and say, Christian prince, may Allah bless you. That means I'm, I'm just a, being a fraud. If they don't oppose what I do, that's a clear sign that this is a person you should not listen to. This is why you see Muslims, they favor some people who claim to be Christian, like James White, as an example. Because he defends Islam. Anyone from any church, Catholic, Protestant, whatever, he defends Islam, Muslims, they say, bless you. There's a rabbi, a rabbi. All his audience are Muslims. He claimed to be a rabbi, he lived in Indonesia. You will not find a single negative comment in his videos. Why? Because he defends Islam, he attacks Christianity. Perfect. The Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. And this is our fruits, and you'll be the judge.
to listen or not. But at the end of the day, the real judge is God, our Lord. He will be back. And even the cult of Islam believe that the Messiah is coming back. So get ready, Muslims. You will stand in front of the Lord, who your prophet said, when the devil he see him, he will be dissolved like salt. And your devil Muhammad will dissolve like salt when he see the Messiah. Our Messiah is coming. Your prophet is dead. And for those who believe in the Messiah, they will live. The Lord, he says, whoever believe in me and I will live forever. Those who follow the dead Muhammad, they go with the dead Muhammad. We are following the living Messiah. Thank you very much. Somebody saying your best, your books is the best for beginners. Uh, Obese, my friend, my book is good for scholars, not for beginners, because I challenge you to tell me something in my book you know already for beginners. People are using my books for PhD. Already many people, they ask me for permission to do their PhD using my books. Because everything you saw there, actually all of you are here for what? Because you are beginners or because you are hearing things you never heard before. How many times you hear Muslims saying, I never heard this before. So what for beginners? Sheikhs, they don't know. So you made me laugh, my friend, when you say for beginners. What beginners? Every page in my books is a shocking information for Muslims, not for you. You know nothing. For those who they are sheikhs for all their life. So thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I will see you soon again. Christ is Lord, Islam is false, and don't forget to download the video as soon as it is ready because we don't get, you know, keep my videos in my page for long. Thank you and God bless. Take care.